I think we can expect that somewhere between 20 and 60 percent of the people in the world, at least the adults, Oh, I think in general, Korean stories. And then we also... We... 충격이 큰 상황인데요. How many people do you expect will be infected globally? If we use what we know about the contagiousness of the virus um, and make some estimates using uh, historical data from influenza and using mathematical modeling, I think we can expect that somewhere between 20 and 60 percent of the people in the world, at least the adults. And the, the reason for those estimates is really um, that when you have a, a virus of this contagiousness, which seems to be a little bit in the same range as as uh, as pandemic influenza, it spreads very widely once it gets out of control, once we decide we can't stop every case. And also not everyone gets sick from this coronavirus. So when we say some number get infected, that doesn't mean they'll all get sick. And certainly most of them will, will recover uh, fine. But it is, it's a number infected, not a number sick. Even among the sick people, it seems to be around one or 2%. So that means 99 or 98% don't die. Epidemics do come to an end, and I think we should keep it in perspective that this is not the end of the world. This is not the worst thing that will happen. The, the most important thing for public health is to know the size of the problem and to know the scale of the problem. And in fact, the United States has been criticized for too little testing, uh -huh. I think. The data that is being generated in Korea may be a real treasure to other countries and to Korea for understanding the scope, what kinds of illness it causes, uh -huh. who the uh, risk groups are. Some people are saying we are are having a disadvantage because of that too many testings that Korea is getting. So it is a disadvantage in that short term sense. Uh, I think given the choice, it's better to have some international isolation for a little while uh, mm -hmm. and be correctly perceived as being open and transparent and trying to fight the problem rather than uh, rather than not know about it. But if we look at the other beta coronaviruses, uh, they do show some seasonality and some decline in transmission in the summer, whether mm -hmm. temperature is the reason or some other reason, like maybe ultraviolet radiation or, or humidity, or we don't know the reason, but the summer is a lower transmission time. But our estimate is that it won't slow things down enough to stop transmission on its own. It, it's gonna take other measures in addition to whatever benefit we get from the summer. Pharmaceutical companies trying to develop a vaccine. Uh, when do you think it is possible? Our our National Institutes of Health said yesterday uh, a year and a half to two years is the best that we could hope for, which mm -hmm. is longer than I had heard before. I think for treatments we might be in a better position. There are trials already underway of of safe and approved uh, drugs that work for other infections to see if they work for this coronavirus. And so that could be more like a matter of months. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, this is the end of my interview and uh, it's gonna great help for Korean people. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.